Hello there. This is a book reading of I Want to Do All the Things, Finding Balance as a Polymath, Multipotentialite, and Renaissance Soul by, by Arcadia Page. And that is me. <laughs> and, um, and this is my first book reading. So I'm pretty excited, but I'm pretty nervous at the same time. Um, since this is a book reading, it is not an audio book. So there will be um, some imperfections in the reading. It's not going to be nice and perfect like an audiobook reader. And by the way, um, this book reading and this book and the book itself has been totally unplanned and unexpected. In fact, I have another book in editing at this very moment. So all of this is coming about in a very uh, random, unexpected, off the cuff sort of way, which is pretty exciting. Um, I also want to uh, mention that um, I'll be only reading the introduction and the first two chapters. So that's what I'll be reading. And um, yeah, so right now I have my ebook reader pulled up. So you can follow along if you wish. And or if you don't feel like following along, you can just listen. That's fine too. And um, so that's what I'll be reading. So. So this is going to be a book reading of I Want to Do All the Things, Finding Balance as a Polymath, Multipotentialite, and Renaissance Soul by Arcadia Page. And this is being read by Arcadia Page. All right, so introduction. I love working with new ideas, new story ideas, new craft ideas, new art techniques. If it's exciting and new, I am there. I enjoy learning, trying a variety of things, and gaining new skills. Borrowing from the Wikipedia definition and adding a bit of my own, a polymath is a person who has knowledge and skills over a wide range of disciplines and who uses the insights gained from their learning to solve problems and create. Other terms that are thrown around for a person who fits this description, multipotentialite, renaissance soul, scanner, jack of all trades, master of none. Add any other terms you can think of here. My favorite terms are polymath and multipotentialite. I love the term multipotentialite because I feel like it embraces the idea that I am a person of multiple potentials. Yes, I am the writer, but I can also be the artist and the singer. I have the potential to live many different lives. I love the term polymath because it's easier to spell. However, as a multipotentialite, I'm going to use this term interchangeably with polymath depending on how lazy I feel. Here are the top problems I face. Number one, project overload. Number two, losing track of projects. Number three, difficulty making time to work on projects. Number four, difficulty keeping up with my own pace of learning. So the goal of this short book is to share how I've dealt with these issues. Hopefully, my findings will help you find some solutions of your own. Reducing Project Overload. Not too long ago, I read the book Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki. I procrastinated reading this book because on the surface, it looked like extreme minimalism. But when I finally got around to reading it, I was so inspired that I read it twice and planned to read it again. Sasaki shares how before letting go of his stuff, he spent much of his time shopping, watching TV, browsing social media, and trying to impress people with his music, movie, and camera collections. However, after letting go of his stuff, he started traveling and learning all kinds of new skills. As a polymath, I'm always learning new skills. What amazed me is how his physical stuff stood in the way of his learning new skills. By letting go of these things, he became a, multipot a multipotentialite. <laughs> he was probably one all along. It's just that he couldn't focus on what he truly wanted to learn because of all the distractions. Once he let go of all that stuff, he started living the multi-potentialite life. Along with being a boost to my personal goal of living a simpler life, his story helped me to see that sometimes my collection of polymath projects can be a mental burden. In his book, Susaki brings out how each item you own creates a to-do list. Dishes need to be washed. Computers need to be backed up and wiped down. Light fixtures need new light bulbs. The same was true for my projects. Each project I start has its own to-do list attached to it. For example, I used to have a rack full of half-done sewing projects. I had a pair of old jeans I wanted to make into a bag, 
and a blouse I wanted to restyle into a pillow. All kinds of stuff. As a result, I had not used my sewing machine in over a year because my mind was overloaded with sewing projects. It was more than I could process, so I didn't process any of those projects. Instead, they sat there for years. Even if I hid those projects on a shelf or in a closet, the heavy to-do list remained. I had only one option to reduce this kind of overload. After reading his book, I let go of all those projects except for one. The one project I held on to was a favorite blouse that I was repairing using the Sashiko method. Progress was slow because I'm new to Sashiko, but it's something that I am excited about learning. Also, I was looking forward to wearing my favorite blouse again. This letting go process was not a thoughtless throw out all of the undone projects. Instead, I realized that some unfinished projects no longer reflect who I am. Some unfinished projects no longer reflect what I want. Some unfinished projects can be made into something new, but remixing doesn't feel appealing when you have a lot of old stuff. I had to look for projects that still made me say yes. Even if, even if I was like, well, I don't know, or I sort of like this, I decided to let it go. If it wasn't a yes, if it didn't spark absolute joy, it was a no. And after six months of making painfully slow progress on fixing my blouse, I was able to wrap it up one month after letting go of my things. I also let go of other projects besides my sewing ones, and I was also able to reach another difficult goal, moving my blog from Blogger to a static blog on GitHub. This involved learning more code than I already knew, so it was an enjoyable challenge. Letting go of so many old abandoned projects was scary, but I'm glad I did it. Letting go of the old, let in the new. And sometimes when I'm overloaded with shiny new things, I remind myself that my best idea is the one I'm working on now. Questions to ask when reducing projects. Is this project related to something else that I want to learn? Do I really have time for this project? Do I currently have the funds and resources for it? Is there a way I can simplify this project or make it smaller? Does this project fit who I am now at this moment? Managing projects. I'm slowly improving at managing my projects. After reading the fantastic Pause to Prolific by Kay Webster, I am currently working on four writing projects. This includes projects that require illustration at the same time. I've come to appreciate that four is a good number. Following Webster's advice, my main focus is on the two projects that I want to get out into the world the most. When I get tired of one, I shift to the other. Project number three is nice for when I get stuck on either project one or two. It also helps me meet my weekly word count goals when one of my, project goes, when one of my projects goes into editing. Project number four is special. It's the passion project. It's the project I reward myself with when I meet my writing goals. It's crazy, but after reading so much about rewarding myself with a bubble bath or Netflix, I think this is my favorite. There's nothing like rewarding yourself with the time to work on a project that you have been dying to work on. Webster recommends pulling out that half done novel you want to finish or that story where you keep thinking, it would be fun to write that. The passion project is any project you would love to work on that usually ends up taking a backseat to your other projects. Following this framework, has helped me so make so much progress, it's crazy. And of course, thanks to my multi-potentialite superpower of transferring knowledge, it was easy for me to see how this approach can work for more than just writing. I believe that doing a batch of four works best when one, there is a common thread running through your projects, like four projects that involve code, or four projects that involve art, or four projects that share the theme summer, I don't know, it just seems to work with projects that share something. Although I am working on four writing projects, those projects span from a nonfiction book to a fiction comic. It's okay if the category is broad, as long as they are related in some way. Number two, you have a goal. In writing, word count is the easiest and most observable goal to set. Depending on the project, the goal may be as clear as word count or may be more obscure. Whatever type of goal you set, I found it helpful that my goals are overall goals. I don't have a word count goal for each project. My word count goal is for the week. 
So it doesn't matter which project I work on. Every writing project is helping me reach my overall goal. I think the same approach could be taken with other projects. Like with art, instead of saying, by the end of the week, I want to be this much done with this project, and I want to be done that much on that one, just say, by the end of the week, I want to have one of my four paintings done. It doesn't matter which one or how you get there, just shoot for finishing one of them by the end of the week. The same can go with four crafting projects or anything else. If finishing a project by the end of the week isn't an option, instead set the goal of being 50% done with one of your projects by the end of the week or something else that is measurable. The key is to set a goal that expands across your pool of projects. This will give you more freedom to pick which projects to work on. At the same time, that goal needs to be specific and tied to a time limit to keep you accountable. As much as it hurt to put into place, having a weekly word count goal has made me more productive. Having a weekly goal is something to shoot for. Also, make sure the weekly goal is somewhat easy to reach. Don't make it so easy that you can reach it in a single day, but don't make it so hard that you're slaving for hours day after day to make it happen. Currently, I can achieve my weekly writing goal in three to four days, if it's a good week. This is just right because it leaves me room to reward myself with time to work on my passion project. If I made my goal too ambitious, I would not have time to reward myself and keep that motivation going. True, the passion project does not contribute to the overall goal when it comes to numbers. However, it does help with going above and beyond what you think you are capable of doing. But one word of warning, don't be rigid, be flexible. Although having four projects going on all four burners can be exciting, sometimes it's necessary to stop juggling and focus on one project. This definitely calls for personal awareness. For me, the number one sign that I need to switch from juggling to focusing is a lack of progress. When I start slowing down on my projects and feelings of frustration start to surface, it's time to focus on the one project that means the most to me. At times, shifting to focus work can cause the weekly goal to fall by the wayside because now the project is being fueled by pure excitement. Accept that as well. All right, so the next chapter is Project Roadmaps, and that is where I am stopping my reading. Um, thank you so much for listening and enjoying this uh, book reading. Um, you can read more of this book um, by purchasing the book. I want to do all the things, Finding Balance as a Polymath, Multipotentialite, and Renaissance Soul. It's a short book, but it's an action-packed book. <laughs> if you're reading, if you're not reading, but if you're watching this or listening to this on my blog, the link is in the blog post to publish to um, buying my recently published book. And if you're on YouTube, the link to buying this book is going to be in the description. All right, thank you so much for listening, and I really appreciate it. All right, have a nice day. Bye.